Okay, very good morning. It's Thursday 12th of March and getting straight into the briefing. And as you can see to the side of me, this headline from Donald Trump, who gave a nationwide speech last night in order to reassure the public has somewhat backfired in terms of how markets have received it. You probably saw it last night, the close on Wall Street was down heavy once again. Um, losses in the Dow, kind of south of the 1400 point mark and the S&P has broken through some um, significant areas of potential support now. And if I just have a quick look on the daily chart, I'm going to refer back to this um, again in a moment. But you can see we were down around that 27, kind of 30 level. Uh, and that was a number that had been eyed by a number of those banks, which we've talked about uh, quite a few times in the briefing. But we managed to punch through there. And you can almost see the um, the importance of that level because when we did break through it, it dropped again substantially another 100 points or so to where we are roughly at the moment where at the actual candlestick low we have printed just around seven points above the 2600 handle. It's bounced a little since then uh, but obviously still down 110 already on the session having Asia Pacific region followed suit from the sharply lower close on Wall Street. Um, not going to go into the, the downside targets just yet because I'm going to get Sam alongside me and a little bit different here. We're going to have a chat side by side about what we think of downside targets because I think we need to start being prudent now and, and thinking about longer term levels. Um, elsewhere then, gold a little bit unreceptive actually to a lot of this move. It's almost like uh, people have just had enough of that now after that big ramp up we had uh, about a week and a half ago or so since that kind of bubble popped on that, that big run above north of 1700. Uh, a little less appetite uh, at the moment, but still seemingly as we've talked to or talked about is this idea that you know, it's still probably gonna remain uh, an asset that will be supported in the period ahead. Uh, the, the kind of general feeling is markets are in a particularly fragile state at the moment and further downside at this point. I think definitely cannot be discounted. So even if gold does come back down uh, a little bit more from here, I still think it remains largely elevated in the grander scheme of things. Uh, in terms of US T notes, uh, it's almost like a small day now, up 23 ticks at this time this morning. I mean, in a normal uh, situation beyond this last period of three or four weeks, uh, I would say at the European Open, a nine tick move would be a big deal coming into the European morning. Uh, now, in today's world, 22 ticks up in the 10-year uh, is pretty small compared to what we have seen on a couple of occasions more recently. But yeah, T-notes up sharply. You can see the bulk of the gain coming in the overnight Asia-Pacific session. So post the Trump speech about the travel ban uh, and the kind of sharply lower close translating into a negative performance in the Asia-Pacific region. And we remain up and around close to the uh, R1 at the moment on the daily pivots there. And then WTI crude, of course, getting hit badly again on the back of what Trump has said. Uh, obviously, travel bans going to impede the airline sector dramatically once again. Uh, you're talking about you know a huge population when you think about Europe as a whole in terms of travel. Uh, and so oil taking another hit. And this comes in the context, of course, with the likes of Saudi looking to flood the market at the moment. Uh, so again, listening to Sam, uh, I think prudent if we start thinking about well, where could this market go to uh, on further downside movement. Well, let me get you up to speed on the headlines first, uh, and then we'll go into that conversation on the, the technical front. And so if you did miss it yesterday, um, there's a couple things to be aware of. Well, let's go in the, the sequence of events. So first of all, um, you had the World Health Organization Director General uh, this chap here who yesterday labeled coronavirus now a pandemic. Now, I don't think that's the catalyst for why the markets uh, have moved like they have so far this morning. I think this was all but inevitable. And so the actual definition, if you like, from epidemic to pandemic, I think is of little consequence. But certainly now this meaning that the virus is on a global scale outbreak and is expected to be worldwide is what this effectively means. Uh, however, this does then, if you think about it from a political point of view, governments, if they had in any case been hesitating, they really don't have a choice now because the major body, uh, the WHO, have said 
you know, this is a pandemic and so governments would not be doing their job if they didn't really take now definitive action. And so that then, if we follow this through, uh, we go to Trump. Trump then was going to give a national address in order to kind of um, ease any concerns that the broader public may have had in terms of the administration being able to control this apparent outbreak uh, and, and further developments that are expected in the United States. Uh, he came out with a surprise, and that, and that surprise being that he suspended all travel from Europe for 30 days. Now, I'm not sure if you actually saw when he delivered that specific line, but he basically said, um, we're going to suspend all travel from Europe. Now, think about what that means. That means trade as well, right? Well, that's how the markets took it, and that's why the move initially was quite, quite strong was because actually it was a bit of a misinterpretation. I don't think he was particularly clear. And actually what he did was, as soon as he came off air, he probably got his advisors going, look at the market, look what's happened. So he quickly hit, the, hit his Twitter account and came back out and said, basically, just so we're clear, trade will in no way be affected by the 30-day restriction on travel from Europe. So you know that would have been pretty horrific outcome for markets if it was going to be a travel ban you would have you would have seen a move way far greater than what we've had so far but nonetheless the move unprecedented in itself uh, has had a big impact a um, couple of other things on the trump point before we move elsewhere and how other governments around the world are dealing with this first of all if you think about about two weeks ago trump said that the eight and a half billion dollar uh, democratic proposal to tackle the virus was too high. Um, he was only asking for two and a half billion. But you remember then a week later, that 8.3 billion got signed off. So he was originally kind of saying, actually, you know what, this virus is a democratic creation. It's nothing. It's not going to be anything. Uh, that was only three weeks ago. He said that exact comment. He then said, we only need a small amount, two and a half billion. Uh, but then he settled on a number of around north of eight billion. Um, he's then called for a three-month suspension of payroll tax, which is going to cost at least three hundred billion. So he's gone from two and a half to three hundred billion in about two weeks. And so, not only that, being a hundred times larger than his initial uh, gambit, if you like, he now doesn't really have so far. And I was, you know, what I was quite interested to see yesterday was actually in the UK budget a degree of, uh, of fairly detailed measures in order to help say small businesses which are obviously going to suffer the most if they cannot facilitate trade and if people are put in these quarantine measures where they can't freely go about their business they're the ones that are going to suffer and so that's going to impact the economy but with Trump so far it's continuing to be quite light on the ground uh, in that respect and markets are, are becoming increasingly frustrated and disappointed by this um, the most glaring omission from his plans so far has been any type of increase in America's capacity to test infections now I did see quite an interesting statistic this morning uh, in the US they've tested fewer than 6,000 people from a population obviously north of 320 million um, to put it into context the Netherlands with 17 million people is testing that many people every day so let me just let me just reiterate that so the Netherlands are testing 6,000 people per day and they've got a population of 17 million America's tested 6,000 people so far and they've got a population of 327 million so yeah there's a lot of I guess apprehension then about how quickly, how rapid those numbers in America could quickly go to 1,000, to 10,000, to 25,000, to 50,000 and beyond. Uh, and, and this is what's being reflected somewhat in markets at the moment. So, yeah, lack of detail from Trump. It's kind of, a, again, as we said before, a lot of bark, little on the bite on the detail. Um, and that's what's got to be forthcoming in order to alleviate these current market concerns. What has this led to? Well, elsewhere, Italy now have taken the next step. They're kind of much more further down the line in terms of this quarantine measures. They've shut down shops, restaurants now. Uh, so all stores other than groceries and pharma pharmacies will be closed. 
Uh, just imagine the economic implications of that. So anything other than groceries and pharma pharmacies are now closed in Italy for the foreseeable future. Uh, and yeah, I've got a couple of other notes here. Um, on Wednesday, the Prime Minister Conte announced that he's increased the emergency stimulus package worth up to 25 billion uh, euros now to help struggling businesses and families. So again, the, these, these, these fiscal interventions now are a necessity, not a choice. It's just a matter of how big and how quickly they can deliver them. In the UK, same thing. Uh, Boris Johnson, he is holding one of his emergency COBRA meetings later on today. So we're likely to get a press statement from number 10 Downing Street at some point where Boris Johnson uh, is expected to say that we've gone from the uh, containment to the delay phase uh, of this outbreak. Now, what's going to be the interesting point here is do we now start again following the Italian lead of which we saw there the first step being that school closures and restrictions on gathering among options. Uh, so what is it? The Cheltenham races that are going on at the moment, school closures, but then obviously knock on effects that that could have on a parent's ability to go to work. And this generally then is the, the first in a step of sequences, which in ultimately leads to more people working from home, uh, colleges and universities also shut down as well as schools, but then does that then start to hit the, the main kind of high street as well, like we're seeing at the moment uh, in other European nations. So yeah, everything is escalating at the moment and, and hence the reason why the market is moving like it is. It's almost like a trigger point though for sure was the travel ban coming out of, of Trump, which puts a lot of pressure on a number of key industries when you look at the, the specific stock sectors that have been getting hit in this current environment, particularly those airline firms. Uh, as I said then, um, oil and, uh, and gas and particularly oil on the travel ban getting hit hard. Uh, and of course, this does come in the backdrop of uh, the OPEC blowout that we had at the end of last week. I mean, I'm just going to have a look at oil. Let's put it on a daily to have a look in a slightly more longer context. And while I do that, I'll ask Sam to come over as well so we can talk about some of these equity charts. But um, let me just remove my camera so you can see some of my screens a little bit more clearly. See if that works. There you go. So you'll still be able to hear me. Um, so this is oil, and you know it's been a phenomenal move that we've had, um, obviously since last Friday. I mean, just having a quick look on a percentage basis from where we were, roughly trading around a 45 to where we are at the moment. We're, we're still down about 40% on that low to where we are at the moment. Obviously, we bounced a little bit up to the kind of 30. Uh, 31 level so we're still down about 32 33 percent at current price but uh, for sure that lower bound level of 26 would be the big target that's that 26 2016 Feb low when we had the big crash initiated really from November 2014 when was the last time um, well let me just put an ellipse here so I can give you the narrative uh, so here was when OPEC took the unprecedented decision to oversupply the market in order to um, put pressure on the U.S. shale industry and to squeeze them out to maintain their monopoly, obviously, and control of the price of oil. But then that, in addition to uh, the supply glut with the slowdown in China and fears of a hard landing, saw that ultimate low down at the 26 handle, which we saw a double kind of test in Jan, Feb of 16 before the eventual more aggressive OPEC action to drastically cut supply kicked in. Um, but here... We're right there again, and uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm pretty confident at some point we're going to see a test at that level, and that then gets really interesting. Uh, and then I think if we start to go down towards 20 bucks, uh, these these countries are going to have to get together because as much as they can play this kind of uh, this game at the moment of trying to challenge them and this is what some believe the Saudi strategy is is to force prices down to those levels so it brings the likes of the US and uh, and Russia back to the table in that really there's there's no way that they can sustain prices that low they've all got to take coordinated action all right well look let me get Sam over and while he's here with me um, I'm gonna make this chart on the S&P big and I just wanted to have a quick chat with him while I'm here about this chart, this is the S&P and perhaps we can look at the Dow. I understand the Dow is um, 
in bear market territory. But to start with the S&P, because obviously Sam can add a bit of a technical talk. And I, I come to this with when he first came in the office earlier. First question is, right, Sam, if you had to pick some levels of where you would want to get long, and this doesn't necessarily mean to be permanently long, but areas of opportunity that could come on further moves to the downside, what would those areas be? Yeah, well, you can see, let's get the 200 day moving average, just how far away we are from that now. I think that the trend line uh, that you, you got on here with your technical analysis skills, I think it's, it's bang on. You've got to have that. So that's 25, 26. It's the low that we had in 2018. And I mean, you'd be a brave person to think we smashed straight through that. I think there's definitely a case for a bounce. Um, technical profit taking, longer term buyers coming in around there. Do I think that's going to be the bottom? No, but I think there'll be a good case for, for price to, to bounce uh, quite drastically higher from there. But also, you know, if we have a look at that, when I said 2018 low, I meant the. Uh, the one from the beginning uh, of Jan. Uh, the December one, I think, is then that next sort of obvious place where uh, price could, you know, longer term be sort of some sort of bottom uh, for, for us to go higher. I, I, I think those are the two, two key levels. I, I think both of them are inevitable, um, but I think we bounce from 25, 26 first. Um, so, so let me ask you this then. So if anyone who's, let's say, new to trading and they were looking at this, so how do you approach this? Do you do you look to get along at those points? And if so, how do you manage that trade? What's your target kind of strategy? Or do you look to b trade the break then of 25, 26 onto the moves lower or both? I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the way, I mean, this market is headline driven at the moment. Pe people were talking about before Trump was talking at midnight, you know, it's going to be an opportunity for equities to go up. And um, if you're positioned for that, you're, you're licking your wounds this morning so it could well be that we come down to 25 26 and there's you know some massive new development which means actually there is no bounce and it goes straight through so i think it's a wait and see on these levels i think if we, you know i always like reminding us back to to the 120 level in pound last year it's you know yes you're likely to get some sort of initial reaction around there but also you know wait to see what happens let the market tell you what's going on the daily close is also you know not a bad uh, indication um, or you know the way these markets are moving the hourly close because of course it could well be that we hit that we bounce and, and next thing you know we're 50 100 points higher so it'll be a wait and see price action will be will be king uh, around these levels uh, I would imagine um, but yeah we're you know it's what we now 26 26 so another 100 points lower uh, obviously I mean that's unlikely to, to happen today uh, as you know we've got limit down not far below here and that will cause price action till 130 and and who knows what happens after that but what, what about the uh, the dow well the dow is you know stupidly i said to you and you and alex if it gets to 21,000 i'll work the rest of the year for free oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah i remember that um, yeah yeah so let, let's let's put a little uh, hang about hang about no, but I, I had my fingers crossed which i didn't i no, should have no, said no, at the time no, no, but, no. So. you told me that that's it <laughs> Uh, uh, that's that's the marker right there. I'm going to leave this on. I'm going to have to hedge right this. Right there, little bullseye right there. Yeah. So Sam North can do all my laundry. He can make my sandwiches every day. He can fetch me my donut and coffee every day. This is the Sam. This is the level right here that I'm concerned about right there. Yeah, but I'm going to hedge this with uh, with a short um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, one way or another. But uh, unfortunately, um, just above that 450 points, which the Dow can do in in five minutes on a Friday afternoon uh, is probably the key one, the one that we're going to be drawn towards. And you can see, uh, obviously got limit down again, not too far away from where we're trading, that can pull swings today. But yeah, the, the December lows, the Boxing Day lows, uh, I think will come into play. We almost need to take them out, I would say. And actually, I think a good way to trade this, if you're looking for that longer term opportunity, is for us to break through, to then come back above, to then find support on there to then go higher. That's the only way really I'm gonna look for some concrete uh, opportunities to get long, like we had with those trend channels when we came back above, we then found support and went. So that's how I'd be looking for that. I think 21,500 is, is, uh, is going to come. Um, but, uh, you know, much more than that, 2016 levels, uh, I don't think so. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not a pretty picture this morning, you know, in 
you know, this side of the pond or, or, the, or the other. Okay, well, look, while, while I've got you here, because I still need to talk about the ECB, but before we do that, because perhaps let's just look at the oil chart, yeah. and then perhaps I can talk about the ECB and you can talk about the euro from a technical basis. So, US, oil? Yeah, I mean, euro's just had a, a bit of a push lower there, but uh, ECB day. Oil, um, you know what, I, I, it was, it's a tricky one, because when I look at oil from what it did on, on the initial bounce from almost that 26 level from... 2016, you think, how can it get that close and not test it? Um, what do I think would come first? I know if a couple of people messaged me this, do I think the gap fill or 26? I think 26. Um, we obviously had that push lower yesterday on the, the Europe ban from, from the US. So technically, again, it's, it's, you know, if I'm looking at that 26 level that we've got on, see on that weekly chart, let's just bring that into picture. Again, it's, it's I mean, is that the buying opportunity of, you know, the next few years and so the way, there's a couple of ways to play it and again thinking of the sort of the 120 level I think we probably get a little bit pop below there and then we can come back up we probably then get another test of that area daily close is key and and that could actually then lead to to price going and, and that's kind of how I would look to play it do you think we can I mean can we go we well, well, one, well, one of the problems is I mean if we did go below and we sustain that price for more than I don't know a week or two there's so many small, or like independent U.S. oil firms, which mm. are going to go out of business. Yeah. And so I think at that point, then um, action does need to happen in, in regard to uh, America and Russia as well. Don't forget the Russian break-even is more like the four, four, yeah. low forties. So we're talking about a twenty-dollar price. That's half what they need. So not only are the Saudis. I, th I think the Saudis, you know, m perhaps as, as crazy as it seemed, the Saudis are what they suggested at the weekend, which caused oil to drop spectacularly at the open this week. Perhaps that is a, 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 a solid plan. You just literally, you, you, you want it to break 26, yeah. as uh, self-inflicting as that might seem. Because the problem is here is all the other oil uh, OPEC nations are following suit as well, and they're yeah. ramping up, because that's, that's how OPEC works. Up other than, say, Iran, when Saudi says jump, everyone else says, well, how high? How high yeah. And then they follow. And so it's not just about Saudi going from 9 to 10 to 11. Everyone else is going up. So you are literally flooding the market. Uh, but, yeah, prices get to 20. I mean, Trump, what's Trump going to do then? When, you know, the, well, he might the, not have the, a job by then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, in the immediate term, you know, these oil firms start popping because the fact that they're loaded with debt and mm. they just can't pay it anymore. Uh, and that's going to be problematic. So... Yeah, I think you're right. I think we could get a break. But if we do, I think it's going to be fairly short-lived. And I think yeah. down at 20, uh, I think even if you're looking at a, a less um, a risky kind of trade, you're not looking to trade in like a derivative, then you've got to be thinking that some of these more Stop. matured, yeah. solid oil companies of a greater size with bigger available cash flow, for example, are going to survive this storm. Yeah. You know, you kind of your Exxon's, your Chevron's, your Total's, and so on. Massively so, disappear. yeah, I mean, if your oil trades down at 20, these companies are going to be here, you know, for for the future. Uh, so even though the small ones won't make it, the big ones will. Uh, and then, you know, do you just load up with some cash stocks for the for the long term? And then, you know, let's say oil goes back as it inevitably will up into the 50, 60 type area. Well, yeah. you got in at down at 20 when oil was trading at that level. So, you know, that could be another a way of playing it. But, um, well, look, let's have a quick look at the euro. Yeah. Well, before I look at the euro, let me just quickly talk about the ECB momentarily. So I'll talk about it from a fundamental perspective. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, though, at all. Why? Because Sam and I are going to cover this live on YouTube. We'll go live at about half past 12, just before the event. We'll cover that and the press conference in full. Uh, but long story short, it, we're in for a, quite an exciting one because obviously we've had the Bank of England emergency cut yesterday, follows the, the first to go, really, the Fed with that 50 basis point move. Uh, the RBA, the BOC, they've all fired so far and now really the pressure's on Christine Lagarde because she's not really had too much to do yet, but this is going to be really telling. And, and yeah, interesting conversation with Alex this morning uh, and it was in regard to just does... Christine unleashed the, the Draghi uh, and Draghi was um, notorious for over delivering. You remember there's so many occasions where you thought okay the ECB are going to do a cut and so on and then he literally 
whips out his bazooka and uh, fi fires a missile, not, a, not his gun, and you know, a whole variety of measures over and above what markets were expecting. Now, could that be one of the, the downfalls of today? Because if that's what markets are used to, albeit Christine is someone else and we should look at her with fresh eyes, markets are used to the ECB acting in quite a strong way to these types of episodes of market volatility. So key things to look out for. And as I said, I'm going to go into this in way more detail later. So do tune in for that. Um, a cut to the deposit rate. Um, that is very much expected and priced in by the market. So I think that's going to happen. So a 10 basis point cut in deposit rate to take it to uh, minus 0.6. The other things that you can expect, though, are the variety of other more targeted liquidity types of measures. Remember what we've said here. When it comes to monetary policy, it's pretty much exhausted and limited in what type of impact it can have in this situation. The people that are going to suffer right now in this type of uh, coronavirus um, lockdown are companies, consumer confidence and small companies. And, and so that's what's going to dam damage an economy. So really, it's the fiscal measures which are really key. So expect Christine Lagarde and ECB to really be pushing governments to supplement any monetary measures with real fiscal action in a more targeted way. Um, expansion of targeted long-term refinancing operations or TELTROs, that's probably a good way in order to keep the market liquid uh, in this sense. Um, would they expand their quantitative easing program? Uh, so obviously, they could. I mean, they currently buy 20 billion. I think City were calling for actually three times more than that. But City are an outlier. Most people are looking at the rules around their quantitative easing uh, buying parameters. So could they buy more corporate bonds? Now think about it. If I just said that what's going to damage the economy is pressure for small, medium-sized businesses, well, why not act directly by buying more corporate corporate bonds. Could that be a way to prop things up? And also, they have this thing called issuer limits, which restricts their ECB buying a certain percentage of a certain country's bonds. Could they temporarily kind of put that aside in order to just deal with the, the current situation? So there's a variety of different things here, but really it's more about fiscal and credit measures, not just monetary, I think, in terms of away from this event and what's really going to help this market to stabilize and perhaps recover. Uh, so, yeah, this is why we need to keep an eye. It's not just about today in the ECB, which, of course, is very important. It's about how do Germany act, how do Spain and France and these other countries act in a coordinated fashion and to what size and scope, which is going to be ultimately quite important. But look, let's have a look at the euro and then I'll hand you over to Sam now for the rest of the, the session. Uh, don't forget to, to like and subscribe to the channel. We're going to be live half past 12. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Yeah, cheers, Ant. Uh, well, just being on the, the euro to, to have a, a quick look at, um, it's actually just testing some of the lows down uh, of yesterday. And, and this is a big level um, to, to have a look at here. I know the dollar index is keep an eye on that because it's a, a pretty key point as well but let's just have a look here longer term daily chart that's the fib 382 up at the top there and we're now back below some of these resist or well, previous resistance levels from august last year and the beginning of, of 2020 so uh, it's getting pretty heavy i mean if you look at the last few days price action 60 minute now drifting lower we're expecting a dovish ecb that's you know it's, it's kind of to be expected uh, the whole carry trade idea is perhaps over 115 the top, maybe. Um, levels to be aware of just below where we're trading. Obviously, here's a great, great floor. Uh, if we can get below there, I'd be sort of looking at, let's just mark that up there, 112.21. I don't see much stopping it to, to get through there if we break this level now. Uh, and then really back down to the 111.50 uh, and 111 handles. I think that would probably cap the, the price action uh, to the downside. If we were to hold these levels and for whatever reason uh, we do push higher, what a trend line, what a trend line from, from yesterday morning. So well respected there. Uh, so a break of that and you know, next thing you know, uh, we're looking at the, the high around 114 and, and then above that then it's the fib. Uh, 0.382 and, and this level around here as well. So Euro at some critical levels, that's really how I would go into today. It's just having it marked up and you know trade what you see, not really going in with a, a bias or not, um, and then going from there. But the trend line for me is, is a key um, key point to have on. If, as long as we're below there, 
you know the short I think will will rule. Quick look elsewhere um, on other markets. The pound been battered, hasn't it? Absolutely battered. Poor thing. It's it's come down from 132 to. 127. Um, however, let's put this, the pivots on here as well. You can see this, the dollar's getting a bit of strength back, you know, across the board. But this is a big level here. This is, you know, down at the the lows of the 28th. And if we put this on the the daily chart as well, you can see we're now back down to that yeah. range we thought we got away from uh, here as well. I guess you know the the, the question is. Does you know does the dollar now have to become this big safe haven over the next sort of few weeks? And and these markets only are only going one direction. I mean, what? Yeah, I, I guess in um, to one extent. I mean, the, the the it's now fully priced in. The Fed are going to go to zero. Yeah. So the dollar has now done it. Has done its thing. It's yeah. priced that in. And so um, I think then with the pound. You know, our economy is already under pressure even before this entire episode because of Brexit and the material impact that that had already put our economy in a weakened state on course for a potential recession. Now you throw in the potential now for a complete shutdown of the United Kingdom in time, perhaps in the coming weeks. Then yeah, I think I think we go lower. I think mm. we break that level. Which is I think we go down. Yeah, and that I means just look how big this level is. Support, support. Okay, a bit messy. Then resistance on the way up, and I mean below 127s. You got what 126 that high yeah. in what September? Yep, around here, and and then it could get, you know, more ugly. So certainly interesting looking at that, and, and it, the same across the board for the dollar pairs, obviously other than, uh, other than the yen. Quick look at gold because uh, I know a lot of people are, are interested in this market. It's starting to get maybe a bit of bid, but it's uh, it's got that margin call, safer safe haven feel again here. 1700 was the was the top, which is obviously a place where people would take profit as well. It's, it's, it's been a magnet. We hit it, fine, let's take profit, we drift down. I think for opportunity-wise, clearer opportunity-wise, there's better markets out there. Uh, but if we were to see uh, another gold dump, that's your level below here, 1631. Uh, and then I would say you get down to 1612 pretty quick. I know it's only 20 bucks for gold, but um, I think that would, would happen there. And then you know we sort of have marked up a couple of resistance levels previously. Uh, you know, 86, 72, maybe intraday you're looking at 55 again, but I, I think cleaner moves will, will happen uh, elsewhere here going forward. Um, any questions? As usual, guys, get us, let us know. We're, we're live 12.30 on, on YouTube, uh, so I hope to, to see, you, see you all there. Cool. Thanks, guys.